key point during the session. Let's bring in Thomas Martin, Senior Portfolio Manager at Global Investment Management for a look at this. Thomas, thanks so much uh, for being with me. Tech is kind of interesting right now. It doesn't seem to be a rising tide lifts all boats uh, kind of situation, especially over the last month. You have seen quite a bit of bifurcation. Yes, uh, thanks for having me on your show, Amber. Um, with regard to tech, you know, the things that have been working and have been really spectacular have been the microchip related and companies, you know, NVIDIA um, and Micron and uh, applied materials in the equipment area. But the, you know, this is the, the pick and shovel for AI um, for the computers. Uh, and they've been reporting terrific results uh, and uh, guiding upwards. So that's always good for the stocks. And they continue to do well in this environment, did well in the first quarter and continue to do well. Uh, on the other hand, the software stocks, uh, names uh, like Adobe, like the cybersecurity names, like some of the big data names, um, have had some disappointing quarters, uh, or at least, least disappointing guidance, um, talks about uh, competition heating up and about um, uh, just fighting for budget money uh, when there's so much spending having to go on to keep up with the, the AI trends. So those companies haven't been doing as well. And that's continuing, uh, that started uh, a bit in the last quarter and is continuing in this quarter. And, and I guess it speaks to the point of if you're going to be an AI company or at least have an AI uh, element like Adobe, for example, or like a Palo Alto Networks, then your forecast had better reflect that, right? Um, because we've been bidding you up, uh, reflecting growth, so there's gotta be growth there. Well, it's a lot more difficult for the companies that are using AI uh, and using it in their businesses and for their customers and for uh, getting advertising, for example, to actually show and prove where that comes through um, on the income statement, whether it's on revenues or whether it's in margins somehow or another. And this is going to take some time to work out and for customers uh, and employees to take advantage of it. It's easy to read the stories about the examples and have it capture your imagination, uh, but it's still at very, very early stages as far as what can be done with it uh, and what the impact is on these users of AI as opposed to the providers. You know, people think of it as a as a two horse race between Google and Microsoft. I know, you know, I know there's a lot of players there. There, you could argue there's room for both. Um, but Google had lagged because of perceived missteps around its AI rollout. Recently, though, it has started to you know really pull away, break out to fresh all time highs, and outperform Microsoft. Yeah, well, Microsoft, uh, you know, it, it is a horse race and they do sort of go back and forth and uh, information that comes out about where they are with regard to AI, you know, uh, has its, its fits and starts. And Google certainly has had some missteps um, and more than one that have been fairly public. Uh, but, you know, they are working on it. They have had an advantage. They just really need to keep on working on it and get it right. Uh, Microsoft, on the other hand, has uh, really kind of across the board uh, has, you know, the, the technology, the software, the infrastructure, the, um, uh, the customer base uh, and, and the, uh, the hiring of the talent uh, that's been made very public uh, and which they can, you know, put through in their products. So they're more of the stable kind of poster child of being able to use it. Whereas with Google, uh, it's it's still a question as to whether or not uh, the whole search category may be upended by uh, these large language models. There hasn't been a sign of that yet, and their market share, it seems to be currently un unassailable. Um, but that doesn't mean that that couldn't change, uh, and people are a little bit wary of that, and that's why that stock um, has lagged in addition to the, the missteps that they've had. But they have a, a huge business uh, and a lot of competitive advantages. Uh, and, and that's one of the stocks that we like because it hasn't outperformed for uh, as much as some of the other companies have.
AI certainly is still a very prominent theme in the market, but increasingly it's not the only one. We are seeing a broadening out to other sectors. What do you make of that? Is that a, a theme you would look to follow? Trim some profits, maybe in tech, deploy elsewhere? Um, well, that's very likely to be what happens. Uh, you, uh, really, the market is coming after earnings that are growing, that are sustainable, uh, and that are surprising to the upside. And that has been in the three main areas that have been performing lately, really, for the last uh, several years, excluding uh, 19, or excuse me, 2022. Um, so that's the consumer uh, discretionary, the communication services and technology. Um, but there are other industries, as you say, that uh, also are benefiting. And the industrials is one, one of them because there's a lot of building that has to go on with these data centers. There's a lot of demand for electricity that we don't have the capacity for. Um, and for the tools and technology to be able to run these systems. And that's firmly in the industrials area. So you've seen uh, a, a lot of movement in there. Um, and that's a place where I think in investors are gravitating as well. You know, the financials have started to come back more kind of from, from the dead and from uh, uh, people uh, wondering if there's some real problems there. Uh, but those have come back more on a valuation basis. And certainly we're heal from, here from the financials as earnings season um, kicks off next week. You know, JP Morgan is right around those all time highs. And we've kind of moved significantly off the narrative of deposits. You know, we're no longer as concerned, especially for some of these large banks. But what are you looking for in terms of, you know, even JP Morgan Fine is an all time high, but, but Citi has had a very sharp rally. What are you looking for these banks to deliver um, and to have earned, you know, given the rally into the quarter? Right. Well, you know, certainly we're looking for loan growth and the loan dynamics uh, for these companies to see that there is demand out there um, from companies for, uh, for money and for investment. But also on the consumer side, many of these are, are uh, pretty good barometers of how well the consumer is doing. And I think that um, we, in addition to others, are going to be looking to see what they say on the credit card side and the spending side, because we have seen some cracks there. You mentioned Ulta earlier in your program, and that, and that was today and the day before. It was the apparel companies um, with uh, PVH down uh, quite large. Uh, after reporting a good quarter, but guiding down substantially. So there's a lot of question as to the sustainability of the consumer and that uh, we'll get some reads on that from the from the big bank.